our guest is an expert. She is currently working as a principal prosecution counsel at the office of the director of public prosecutions. This is Jacqueline Omo, who will help us understand this conversation. Jacqueline, Karibu. Thank you. It's quite a pleasure having you with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome. So let's get into this. First, before um, we start, well, um, tell me, uh, what are some of the stereotypes, uh, you know, associated with the career of being a lawyer? Because, you know, <laughs> Mimi, you know, at some point in my life when I was young, I wanted to be a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, so much because, one, it's a, you know, prestigious career to be associated with, you know, lawyer, doctor, engineer, you know, those Still. types of career. But later on, um, someone told me that, I, you want to be a lawyer? You, you want to be a liar, so basically mm. that's what they said. That's the first one. <laughs> that's the first stereotype, yes. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. There's the stereotype that lawyers are just in it for money. We are, we are uh -huh. rich, we have money, which is not entirely true. <laughs> yeah, we, we are all trying to make it in this trying life. Trying to make money. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a stereotype that we, ju we, are, we just like to argue. It doesn't matter whether we are right or wrong, we, mm -hmm. we just like arguing. Exactly. You know, and so, some people in school, you're like, um, I know how to argue a lot, so I think I, I can, can be, be a lawyer. lawyer you, yeah. know? <laughs> you know, and you, you find mm. you'll come across people who don't like arguing who are actually lawyers, mm -hmm. who are very quiet. Lawyers are always, often people think we are very loud, uh -huh. obnoxious, you mm -hmm. know. But some of us are just polite and, and chilled. And, chill, you know. <laughs> and chilled, yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. there are very many stereotypes. But as we were doing Breaking the Bias last week mm -hmm. for the women's, mm -hmm. there's also that Breaking the Bias we are doing for lawyers. For lawyers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Right, we'll yes. see how that goes. Mm. Hopefully, you know, the perception changes mm. and the, break the stereotypes. Uh, so now, um, maybe you can tell us um, what you do, exactly what, what exactly you do, mm. and uh, your roles My before roles. we start. Uh, yes. So, um, I work at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Mm. I am a Principal Prosecution Counsel, and mm. I'm currently based at Makadara Law Courts. Mm. So what I do is I prosecute criminal cases. Mm -hmm. I only deal with criminal cases. So, okay. So, our office has mm -hmm. the mandate to institute criminal cases on behalf of the government mm -hmm. and the people of Kenya um, in a criminal court. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we do. We institute the criminal cases. Okay. Yes, and we prosecute them to completion mm -hmm. and we also give the government advice on issues pertaining to criminal law. Okay, so yes. basically uh, you go and represent the state in a court of law? Yes, okay. perfect. You got it. Ah, yes. I'm not so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> that I have is an it. idea. Okay. Yes. All right. And then uh, just to um, make it clear, you know, some jargons, you know, associated with law. And uh, we just want to make it clear so that as we go on with the conversation, people understand. So give us um, the difference between being a lawyer and being an advocate first, and then also being a prosecutor and being uh, an attorney. Okay. Mm -hmm. So being an attorney and being an um, advocate, kind of like the same, it's just that the, so juris the, the jurisdiction words are different, yeah? Okay. But mm -hmm. um, being a lawyer means you have gone through um, university and gotten your LLB, mm -hmm. then you have graduated, mm -hmm. and as soon as you graduate, you're now a lawyer. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So for you to be an advocate, you mm -hmm. go to Kenya School of Law. Mm -hmm. You go and do your pupillage. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, you become an advocate. You get, ad ad you get to an advocate status when you're admitted into the role. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you get into the role, and then you're admitted to the bar, and then now you can practice before a judge or a magistrate. Okay. As a lawyer, you cannot mm -hmm. appear before a judge or a magistrate. Mm -hmm. If you're a private practitioner, then you have to go to LSK and pay a certain amount of money and get a practicing certificate for every year that you want to practice. Mm -hmm. For us who are in government, mm -hmm. we have an exemption to that rule. Mm -hmm. We can still practice before the magistrate and the judges mm -hmm. without us having to obtain a practicing certificate every mm -hmm. year. All right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, taking you back to uh, after you finish your degree, that is four years yes. in school, yes. uh, you become a lawyer. A lawyer, yes. Okay, but you can't represent anyone in court. You can't no. stand before the magistrate. No, you can't. So you go to the, uh, the next... Kenya School of Law. You still go to Kenya School of yes. Law again. For two years, 
one and a half because one mm. year is like the teaching mm -hmm. and then you have half a year where you are in practical. When, okay, yes. so that's what you call the pupillage. The pupillage, yes. Uh -huh. So after that, after you finish that and it's assessed and you sit for your exams and you mm -hmm. pass, mm -hmm. then now you're eligible to be admitted into the, the role and then now you go get admitted to the bar mm -hmm. and now you are recognized by LSK. You get a number by LSK and then you can pay for your certificate. Mm -hmm. You have advantages that mm -hmm. come with being um, rep uh, par uh, part of the society. All right. Yes. So what are some of those advantages? Advantages. Mm -hmm. Just last week, they were doing the, um, they were doing the elections. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if you're part of LSK, you can run for office. Okay. Yeah? You, oh. there's, uh, they have um, different um, associations within the organization that allows you to get mm -hmm. like the Advocates Benevolent Fund. Mm -hmm. They have things that give you access to like insurance mm -hmm. at a better rate because they have negotiated for you already. So mm -hmm. there are packs to being under the LSK mm -hmm. uh, society. society, yes. All right. And, uh, you know, being admitted to the bar, people make such a big deal out of it. it Maybe it is. It is a big deal. <laughs> it is, okay. <laughs> so how hard is it to, you know, to be admitted to the bar? It is, it is hard. It's not <laughs> easy because mm -hmm. it, takes, it takes a whole lot from you to actually go through the coursework mm -hmm. and pass your exams. They're not easy exams, by the way. Mm -hmm. So it takes determination and it takes a lot of work for you to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what if you fail at that point? There's an option for you to receive your oh, examinations okay. just like mm -hmm. in any other course. Any other. Yes. All right. There's an option. So with all the, you know the process and everything, why is this career important for someone who wants to get in and they're thinking that ah, if it's such a process, such a hectic process, six years to learn and mm -hmm. uh, getting to get into the market, you know, so why is it an important career for someone to get into into it? Mm -hmm. I, and and um, maybe I should say it depends on why you want you want to get into this career mm -hmm. because. There's very many aspects, but basically a lawyer is someone who advocates for rights, All right? right? Mm -hmm. And everyone needs someone who will advocate for their rights. For their rights. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it depends on now which area this person is advocating your rights on. Mm -hmm. You will find, like us prosecutors, we advocate for human rights, mostly in the criminal courts. Mm -hmm. And for law and order and peace and security, that's where now we are. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have a, a company lawyer or a corporate lawyer who will be ensuring that your organization mm -hmm. is running smoothly, that the laws and re regulations that are set by the government pertaining to companies are held to esteem in your own company. Mm -hmm. So th then we have them, they're checking your ethics as well. So mm -hmm. they make sure you're right. So they're advocating for you as well. You mm -hmm. won't be in trouble with the law when it comes to any civil cases. Mm -hmm. Then we have people who would probably be advocating for civil rights. Mm -hmm. We have people who'd be advocating for immigration rights, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it, at the end of the day, a lawyer is someone who advocates for the different kinds of rights that you have like that are set out in your constitution, okay. yeah, for all rights. So the uh, different parts uh, in being a lawyer, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that mm -hmm. uh, in depth later on. So basically, it's why you want to be a lawyer that counts. Mm. So, okay, all right. And uh, what's the difference between, you know, a lawyer in the public and uh, a lawyer, a private, in the private firm? Okay. So, mm -hmm. I think, like, if we say it in layman's terms, yeah? Uh -huh. So, a lawyer in the private um, arena would probably be someone who has employed themselves, or even if they're employed, mm -hmm. they are governed by the rules of the particular law firm that they, they are in. in, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and in government... Mm -hmm. Uh, as I told you before, we are exempt from getting the practice certificate, mm -hmm. which we'd see as a park. They are here or there, but sometimes we don't see it like that. It, it but is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we don't mm -hmm. see it like that because it excludes us from certain aspects with the LSK as well. Okay. Yeah, because like right now mm -hmm. we cannot stand for office under the LSK. Mm, okay. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, lawyers who work in mm -hmm. the public sector, mm -hmm. we are employed by um, government offices, right? Mm -hmm. So you can be employed by the Public Service Commission, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You can be employed by the IEBC, mm -hmm. you can be employed by the EACC, mm -hmm. you can be employed by KRA, you can be employed by, mm -hmm. of course, ODPP or the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. So you see, we fall in the public, in the public sector. Then private is mm -hmm. like when you finish your, your law school, mm -hmm. you can open up your own law firm mm -hmm. and run it as a one-man shop. You can decide to, or to employ other people, mm -hmm. come into a partnership. Mm -hmm. And then you get to pick and choose what cases you're going to do, okay. right? Yeah. And for us, we don't pick and choose which, what, cases? which cases we're going to do. Okay. Once I am there, I will handle every matter that comes before me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay, so now um, in the public space, when you want, we, we are, you're from the law school and you want to open your firm. So do you get a license to open a firm? Or be yes. Okay, yes, because so it's like a business. It's a business. Yes. So after that, you're good to go. Mm. You, get, you get partners and everything. Yes. Uh, now, being a lawyer in the in the public space, again, uh, we have some perception. I don't know uh, those. I don't know if you represent people for free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for it is. That's okay. exactly what That's we exactly do. That's exactly what you do. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so in the right uh, direction. So now people say that. Um, you know, you la you like represent criminals, crooks, mm -hmm. and is that the case? So now you're sometimes? mixed up again, okay. because in the public, like now, if I speak as a prosecutor, mm -hmm. so I prosecute the criminals, right? Mm -hmm. So they will get a private lawyer to represent them against right. me, who represent mm -hmm. the states. Mm -hmm. And as much as I'm representing the states, mm -hmm. I'm also looking into the rights of the person who has complained. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So if, for example, um, you are assaulted, right, mm -hmm. and you go and report to a police station, then you become someone who we call a complainant. Mm -hmm. Right. You are the one who is complaining. When you come to court, you don't necessarily need to have an advocate because now my job is to advocate for you as mm -hmm. a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. I present your case before the magistrate so that the magistrate can see that you are right were infringed upon by the mm -hmm. person who assaulted you. Mm -hmm. Then the person who assaulted you will hire a private lawyer to come and represent him mm -hmm. as against what I am saying, mm -hmm. trying to disprove whatever facts I am trying to prove on your behalf. Okay. Yes. So what's the process before you take on a case? Do you go into checking if, they're really, if their complaint is really true first before? So that mandate falls under the National Police Service mm -hmm. because they are the investigators. So when you see EACC, you see DCI, you see the National Police, they mm -hmm. have the mandate to investigate cases. Mm -hmm. So once they investigate their cases, they bring for us a file to look at. And when we look at a file, we read the facts and we say, okay, this one seems to have enough evidence that can convince a magistrate mm -hmm. beyond a reasonable doubt that this person is guilty. And mm -hmm. that's the kind of file that we will want to register and take to court. Right. Mm -hmm. So they will investigate and we will prosecute and the magistrates will again make their final decision. So it's a stakeholder kind of thing that goes on. We oh. cannot all work in isolation. Mm -hmm. We all work together. You have together. to work as a team. Yes. Okay. All right. So back to if someone wants to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you said first is the reason why you want to be a lawyer. So if, well, if this is uh, well established, so I want to be a lawyer because I'm passionate about, you know, social justice, defending mm -hmm. uh, people's rights. So uh, what next after that? What next? So mm -hmm. you... Okay, when I was going to law school, right, mm -hmm. to get into a law school to do a degree, you had to have at, le have at least a B mm -hmm. in English mm -hmm. or in Swahili, mm -hmm. right? So either, of the either of those. Okay. Then, of course, your grades must be good. You have to have a B average mm -hmm. altogether. I don't know if there's... I thought it was a C minor. Plus. No, it's not. When I was going, it was like a B average. I don't know if they've uh -huh. taken it to a C plus, but... B, B is safe for you. For a public, for, a pub, for you know. For anyone who wants to be a lawyer. Anyone. For so anyone what? who wants to be a lawyer. Ah, all yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So you will go to law school mm -hmm. for your four years and graduate. Right. Right. Then um, after that, then you apply to join the Kenya School of Law. Mm -hmm. This means that you want to represent people before court. But you can also decide, you can also go to Kenya School of Law and decide you don't want to enter a courtroom. Mm -hmm. you know? So these are the different parts that uh, a lawyer can take? Can take, yes. So what are those? Because you can be a corporate lawyer, mm. right? 
Yeah. You, you work behind the office, you look at documents, you do contracts, mm -hmm. you attend meetings, you can partner it with your HR so that now you can be doing the HR legal side of the company mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So at, at no point mm -hmm. uh, will you be needed in a court? No, because you'll find that many of these big companies will definitely have a panel of, of uh, lawyers who can represent them before court. Mm -hmm. So you as the legal officer in that company will just be liaising with them. So okay. you don't necessarily need to go before court and, and, okay. have, and, and appear and represent them. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then you can... If you look at um, activists, most of them you'll find that many lawyers are actually activists, Activist, right? right? Because mm -hmm. we see where what the law says and then we see where it is not being followed and we always raise alarm mm -hmm. about it. And that's another power that the LSK branch holds, mm -hmm. the society holds, because they are to keep the government in check in ensuring that the people's rights mm -hmm. are not being infringed upon even by the government itself. True. Right? Yeah. So, um, to take you back to your question, being a lawyer is not just um, appearing before court. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. We, you can do it in very different ways. You find even at the UN, we have very many people who are lawyers mm -hmm. who basically would sit and run projects mm -hmm. that would be advocating for certain rights. Like I was talking to you about immigration rights, about the refugee rights. Yeah. So you, you'd see that there are lawyers who are needed in all those spaces. I think yeah. we need lawyers in almost all oh, aspects. Actually, that's the <laughs> thing. Life. Lawyers mm -hmm. are very, it's a good career because mm -hmm. you can fit in anywhere. Anywhere. Yes. Because when you want to get married, you need a lawyer for something. Yes. When you want Afidavid. to get help, you need a lawyer yes. for something. So yeah. different aspects and of you life can, you need lawyers. You can, journalists, how many journalists do you have who are lawyers? Think well, about it. Not many. <laughs> not very many, by the way. Because really? Law, law can be paired. There's a course that's called law and journalism and the law. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you guys also have certain rights mm -hmm. and you have certain restrictions by yes. the act that governs you that you also need to know about. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about all those rights. Okay. It's a lawyer. It's a lawyer. Yes. Right. Okay. So, so either way, we are here to protect and serve. Yes. Right for citizens. <laughs> That's what okay, it's do. more of service. <laughs> it's a career. It, it, you in were service. speaking earlier about mm -hmm. um, it, whether jobs are a calling. Yeah, I think I think most jobs are most for the people. Like even us is definitely a calling. Definitely. Yes. So okay, on, on that still. So if it if it is a calling, so uh, someone can just wake up, you know, and decide. I think I might want to do law, you know. To become a lawyer just because i can just because you know i'm smart and i can understand the law at some point so that's not enough is it is that enough rather it's actually it's enough it is the thing is mm -hmm. when you get in there mm -hmm. then you will find that the the, well, the game is different All right. you understand mm -hmm. many people in our time got into law because we wanted to make money because lawyers looked rich, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, this would be a stable career and I won't have to hustle exactly. too much. Exactly, and right? people respect me in the society, you know. Exactly, <laughs> so now you get here and you get a job like a prosecutor and mm -hmm. it stops being about the money mm -hmm. and it starts being about the people. All right. So it, you can decide at whatever point because you're smart, you want to do this. But mm -hmm. once you get into the field, things are different. You mm -hmm. might get there and you, and you just, you're into um, ensuring that everyone who is trying to buy property is, is not swindled, right? Mm -hmm. So you go into conveyancing law, mm -hmm. right? So your job is to ensure their contracts are proper, the stamp duty is properly paid, they've done their searches properly and all those things. And you get passionate about it. And then at some point you stop being about the money. And I'm telling about. you lawyers, we do a lot. Wow. We are therapists. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are counselors, we are confident. So those people for call in the middle of the night, like, ah, I need to. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. people will always be coming to you and asking for your advice and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's what happens. So what are some of the cases, maybe one particularly, uh, before maybe you got into uh, criminal law? I don't know if you did something before, something different, but mm. uh, a case where you represented a client and you got attached maybe, to the, uh, wow. the case or the client or the particular issue? So before I joined the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, I was working for the Attorney General's office mm -hmm. and I was rep still representing the government, but in mm -hmm. civil cases, yes? All right. But 
if we want to talk about attachment, then I'd tell you where I am right now is where you actually get attached to people. Ah, really? Okay. Right? Because every complainant, survivor, mm -hmm. victim mm -hmm. is someone who you have to interact with on a daily basis mm -hmm. and hear them out and um, listen to their concerns and assure them that they will get justice. And that's why I was telling you, when you get in there... You have to be a counselor. You are everything for that person. <laughs> you wear many hearts. Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. You're everything to that person. And you will often get attached. There's not one case that you will do and just be like, you don't care. Mm -hmm. Because everyone who approaches you is different with a different story mm -hmm. and a story of their life which they will share with you mm -hmm. that will change the way you look at everything wow. in their and, case. And you're not supposed to get uh, attached to a case, maybe, you know. I, I, you aren't supposed to, maybe, but you're still a human being and you will so have empathy way. for mm -hmm. people. Yeah. So either way, you'll still get atta yes. attached to it. Yes. And, uh, uh, okay, so back to uh, what we were talking about. Um, before we come to a close, uh, rather, so tell us about what you do outside your office, because I also know that you have Linda Salama, so your passion goes beyond what you do in the office. Okay, so Linda Salama, I formed it in 2018. Mm -hmm. After okay, can I, can I uh, stop you yes. just for a bit sure. because we want to go on a break and then we'll come uh, back to this. Tell us about Linda Salama and what you do and, uh, you know, more into uh, the career of law. Okay. So thank you for, you know, being with us. Let's take a small break and we'll be back to continue with the discussion. All right, welcome back. Well, this is still one in the morning and we're continuing with the conversation understanding the lawyer's career if you have any questions from what we have discussed so far you can um share your you know questions at uh y254 channel using the hashtag why in the morning my personal handle is at stephanie ayeta well our guest's handle because i did ask about that <laughs> <laughs> where can people find you in case they have questions which okay. uh, they would want to uh, mm -hmm. on twitter at jackie o on Twitter at Jackie. Jackie oh, yes. So that is your social media handle. Yes. There are others to watch <laughs> <and> as well. <laughs> okay, so before we went on a break, we were talking about what you do outside the office yeah. and it shows the conviction, the commitment, the passion that you mm. have because it's similar to what you already are doing. Yeah. So tell us about about it, Linda Salama. Linda Salama. Mm -hmm. So I, I attended a training mm -hmm. with YALI, Young African Leadership Initiative. Mm -hmm. And after that, I formed Linda Salama. Mm -hmm. So Linda Salama basically is an organization that I created to um, create awareness on sexual and human rights, basically, rights of children and women. Mm -hmm. And this was because of the number of cases that I was coming across in the office, which were regarding a lot of sexual assaults against women and against children at the time. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't also sensitize and give uh, awareness to the other gender being the males, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they too, um, and often not, they do get um, part of the gender-based violence uh, raw end of the stick. Mm -hmm. So we are here to give, uh, to create awareness and to give information as to where you can go when this happens to you, what you need to do, what steps you need to take, and mm -hmm. even merge you with a counselor so that you are able to get counseling mm -hmm. and just to put you back in a path where you can proceed with your life without having too much trauma left within you. Wow, yes. this is quite a nice initiative mm -hmm. and it comes from your passion really to you know help people uh, fight for their rights yes. and know the rights that they have, mm -hmm. you know. And so if someone wants to reach out to you, maybe mm -hmm. they're going through something yes. and not you in the <laughs> office of the you know, DPP, mm -hmm. but you in Linda Salama. So we have our Facebook page where mm -hmm. we do take in, in messages that you can do it even anonymously if you want. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a Facebook page that's called Linda Salama. Just that one word, Linda Salama, and you will find us, and then you can give us an inbox, mm -hmm. and then we will follow up on your request. All right. Yes. Sawa sawa. I believe that will help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So um, back to it. So one wants to be a lawyer, but they have a personality, a shy personality, and you've mentioned this at mm -hmm. first. So, you know, when you have a shy personality and you're maybe an introvert, but you want to be a criminal lawyer, you know, because there are other aspects of being a lawyer, you've mentioned it, but I want to be a criminal lawyer, but, you know, I'm an introvert. 
but I have the passion <laughs> to represent criminals mm. in court. So what do I do? Well, if you're an introvert, I don't know how else to put this, but mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be loud or an extrovert to be a lawyer or to even represent anyone before court, right? Mm -hmm. But you have the passion, well, okay, maybe you should apply to the judiciary side as mm -hmm. well. We could, you can also think about that. You can apply to be a magistrate. You can, uh, you can apply to be a researcher. You can apply to be a, a law clerk. You know, mm -hmm. all those, everyone, it's a stakeholder relationship. Everyone is important. Mm -hmm. But again, I must reiterate that you do not have to be an extrovert to appear mm -hmm. before a court of law and represent someone. You don't have to be the loudest person in the room. Even if you're an extrovert and you're good at your job, so long as you're able to present your client's case, mm -hmm. that works. Okay, yeah. so the personality doesn't really matter. We, we, are, we are all very different personalities, <laughs> by the way. Okay, okay, yes. all right. And for someone who is already in this particular career, mm -hmm. but uh, somehow they're lost. Mm. Maybe because, uh, you know, I have a case where a friend uh, finished their studies. Uh, I believe they got their accreditation as an advocate, but then they've never really gotten a job 10 years later down the line. Mm -hmm. So why is this? You know, someone can be lost. This is your career, but you're not getting the opportunities. But would you be lost or probably you would be looking for something specific and you don't want to try out anything else, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because as I told you earlier, there's law in everything. There's law in journalism. There's law in medicine. There's law in HR. There's law in everything, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you can try out different areas and even just um, try... Even just like as a in the civil society, yeah, mm -hmm. you just go and volunteer. Then you see if it's a fit before you can decide. Then this is not my path. This is not what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. You can decide and come and sit in a courtroom and be like, no, this is not what I want to be doing. Then you'll find that you're you're better at conveyancing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather be uh, advocating for people selling property and things like that, being in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. So law is in everything. So you don't have to restrict yourself to a particular kind of law or weight or mm -hmm. just know that once I finish school and go to LSK to KSL, then I must go before court and represent criminals mm -hmm. or on the other side, you know? No, don't so close your mind to it mm -hmm. because it is so wide. Mm -hmm. You can pick anywhere you want to go. Okay. Yes. So, so basically what you're saying is that after you're done with school, you should be open to opportunities. And one way to do that is to volunteer in different yes. areas to see where you fit in best yes. so that you can decide, let me, let me go with this because this is my thing. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those lawyers that actually, some are lost, they're here, they're there, you know, I'm in criminal because I'm also trying to find my way mm -hmm. and I'm past the pupillage stage, mm -hmm. you know. So I get a case in criminal, uh, in criminal, uh, is it criminology? Criminal, criminal yes, case, criminal yeah. case. I get a case in criminal case, mm -hmm. I get a civil case, I get, um, you know, a conveyor case. So, you know, I'm neither here, I'm neither there. Well, you know, it's allowed. So that's a general practitioner, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you, generally you can handle all kinds of business. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can be a civil, you can handle a civil case, you can handle a criminal case, mm -hmm. and you can handle a convincing case. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes you more marketable in this uh, <laughs> Kenya that we live in, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to open, just like the way supermarkets open branches everywhere, right? right. So them, they're getting more clients when they have <laughs> branches in all parts of the, of the country. If you are able to handle all the three facets, then it is fine. But is it not better to be identified specifically with one, like something like being a jack of all trades, but a master of one? Well, you can be a master of one, which is good as well. Mm -hmm. But then, and that would make you an expert in your field, exactly. right? Like if you're doing only um, divorce cases, then that mm -hmm. would make you an expert in your field. Mm -hmm. Then probably you can charge a higher rate because you are the expert, right? Yeah. But then remember that uh, you... you what if something changes? Mm -hmm. What if something changes? And you, or let me, or maybe you're a convincing lawyer and something changes and now the real estate business is down. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? So what happens? Exactly. But in that case, you'll have, you know, because being a jack of all trades but a master of one means that you know all these other areas, mm -hmm. but I'm better in, you in know, one. In one, mm -hmm. yes. I'm more identified, you know, when you have a criminal case, this is the person to go to. So I think that would be better. It's better, but I don't think there's a problem in in knowing all parts of the law because we mm -hmm. learn all those different parts of the law 
in, in school. Training. Mm. And and for for me, I am in the criminal side because that's where my passion is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But if anything happens, I should be able to hold myself up and move to the other side. Okay. Yes. So what about uh, those lawyers that are there but want to get ahead in the career, want to have that extra factor, you know, that extra factor that people are looking for? Mm -hmm. What should they do? What should they do? <laughs> yes. What are some of the advice, the tips to get I, ahead I, I, in your I career? I think, is it, are we talking on a private side or on a public side? Well, general. Because um, you, like even for us, even in our field, even mm -hmm. as prosecutors, mm -hmm. we, we will find that some of us are, we handle like sexual assaults better mm -hmm. than others because for others it's a bit too much for them to handle. We'll have people who are as uh, doing murder cases only and therefore they can be called experts in that particular field. Mm -hmm. So for you to advance yourself further and you want to be to move further ahead, then there are certain courses that you can do just to make yourself more marketable. You mm -hmm. understand? Because mm -hmm. often you will find there's a training here and there that you can attend and pay for and you get a certain certificate that will push you further ahead than the other people. Okay. Right? And it, it doesn't just happen in, in the public side, also in the private side. All right. You can find a lawyer has gone and done the higher diploma course in HR. Mm -hmm. So that, that's already given that particular lawyer a push factor over someone who has not done any extra course. So what are some of these extra courses? Or oh, it depends on where we want to specialize yes, exactly. in. Yes, exactly. Now right. that again depends on you as an individual. Like mm -hmm. what is your passion? So having that extra certificate mm. is... A good thing. Yes. All right. And what are some of the areas coming up maybe uh, that lawyers can look into? Maybe especially now with technology, you know, technology oh has gosh. come up and well, things are changing. Lawyers are already in IT. Lawyers are everywhere. They're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because mm -hmm. lawyers are everywhere. Remember, before any law is passed, a lawyer will be consulted, mm -hmm. right? So there is actually law in IT right now, and Invasive lawyers are already protection. there. That's what I'm telling you, lawyers are everywhere. Mm. You cannot do law and not get a job unless you're very strict and constricted on what specific kind of thing you want to do. But if you're mm. open-minded, you can fit in anywhere. So basically, in school, like, you know, most of uh, these other courses, you're taught, uh, the fa you're taught uh, general things the first maybe uh, two years, mm -hmm. and then in your third year, you major in something specific, mm -hmm. maybe like for journalism, uh, you know about the lighting, sound, but when you get to third year, you major in broadcast, print, whichever area that you want to focus in. So in law, there's nothing like that. You would find that there are some optional courses that you can do. Like, mm -hmm. you can decide to do the law and journalism course mm -hmm. in, in, in campus, and then I can decide to do uh, the child protection law. Because that one's not a compulsory, a compulsory course, so you can pick which of those two to do, right? Mm -hmm. But basically, you will find that all the other major parts of the law, we all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we go to KSL, the, we all do the same thing. There's no... There's no specific course that you could pick. Selective courses, no. You all do the same thing. So you do the same thing and yes. then you later on you Yes. So now when you something. go, when you want to go do your master's, you see that's a different thing. Because mm -hmm. now you can decide to go master in environmental law, right? Mm -hmm. I can decide to go master in criminal law. So that's when now you can decide where your speciality will be. Okay. Yes. So, uh, all right. Uh, just as we come, you know, to a close of this conversation, there are some of the, you have some achievements that you have made, I believe, in your area of specialty. So, just to encourage someone, what are some of those achievements, the successes the in successes. law? So that, mm, yeah, in law. <laughs> yeah, in being a lawyer, you know, <laughs> a prosecutor in your uh, organization. Yes. I also know that you're there with legal sisters. Yeah. So, what are some of those wins? The wins. Okay, mm -hmm. so under legal sister, we started the petition to have the border border operators regulated. Yes, you actually yes, did. And we got very we got a lot of public support which we are so grateful for. And we are pushing forward to ensure that all the regulations that the government has indicated that they want to set, we mm -hmm. want to make sure that they actually do it because this conversation is has been had before. And there was no follow through, so we want to make sure that the follow through happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm That's also quite, uh -huh. part of a group called Positive Circles. We curate positive conversations in the society 
basically around the women because you know they say us women we never come together for good so we <laughs> so do create okay. positive conversations mm -hmm. around the women in the society and yeah that's what we do okay all mm. right as we come to a close as we finish actually what is the last advice that you'd like to give to youths who are looking forward to becoming lawyers you know it's a viable career path they it's say. a very viable career path i would say if you have the heart for it because it requires a lot of studying as well. Mm. But if you have the heart for it, go for it. You will not miss a place where people need you to advocate for rights mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You will right. always find a space in this table. Yes. For you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. for having me. It's been a great conversation and I believe very informative for us uh, youths and uh, those you know who specifically want to pursue the lawyer's career. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, converse with us at Y254 channel using the hashtag Y in the morning and we'll be reading out your comments later on in the show. That has been a wonderful conversation with Jacqueline Omol, uh, who is the Principal Prosecution Counselor, Counsel at the Office of the Direction, Director of Public Prosecutions. Well, we take a short break and uh, we'll be back with Ram.